Father, we've come together tonight, study your word, study the gifts of the spirit, expose our hearts to the word of God and be instructed in the word of righteousness because Lord, I believe with all my heart and I have for a long time that you want all of your people to flow in the gifts of the spirit. You wanna use your people. The world has no idea just how badly they need us and how much they depend upon us. And even though they don't like us, some of them, or some of us don't care for us, we're their lifeline to heaven because we have the words of truth and we have the love of God to share with them. And so, Father, I pray for a boldness to come upon all the people who hear this word tonight and that they will have the courage to step out and be used of the Holy Spirit whenever or wherever you call upon them to be used. And I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to start with a story tonight, and this story I may tell again on Sunday, so give you a heads up. Now I'm lost. I'm, I just lost the anointing. Oh, got it back. You should turn your cell phones off so you're not disturbed. Years ago, and I can, I can tell you exactly where I was standing when I heard this. But I was talking to the Lord and I says, Lord, I don't understand something. I know that you created all angels. And the angels that we have known that people have seen and we know of, of angels in the Bible are big, they're strong, they're beautiful, and they have supernatural power. What I don't understand is the devil's angels, you created them, but they're all, and I've only seen one in my, in my mind. Not, I've never had an open vision. I always wanna make that clear. I'm not believing for one. I've never had an open vision, but in my mind, I was praying for a person and I seen this black glob on their shoulder and I thought, what is that? The Lord said, that's a demon. And I cast it out or cast it off. So I said, Lord, why are the devil's uh, angels so ugly and and dirty and black and shriveled up and I asked him that question then I started to pray in the spirit for I prayed for a couple hours <clears throat> and at the end of two hours I just stopped to take a breath and the Lord says he just said because they're carriers and I thought I says no what do you mean carriers he says son they carry sin sickness and disease and their job is to put it on, on my people. And, and he says, then he, then he reminded me of people I have seen who, who have dying from terrible diseases and they're all shriveled up and stuff and, they, and that disease is killing them. And so I said, Lord, I prayed for two hours. Why didn't you just tell me this right up front when I asked you? He says, oh, I'm just enjoying your fellowship. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to uh, bring that testimony to you, that story, to introduce where we're going tonight in the study of the gifts of the Spirit, and that the devil is a carrier. He carries sin, disease, uh, sickness, and all kinds of, of, of lack and everything else, and so we definitely don't want anything to do with him. Now, if you would go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that's, that's been the, that's where the introduction of the gifts of the Spirit really began. In 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Whenever I read this, you ought to say to yourself, I am one of those every men. Anybody can be used in the gift of the Spirit. It, it doesn't matter your background or you know anything as long as you're created in the image of God, which is true righteousness, and you have the Holy Ghost. That manifestation uh, it wants to rise up in you, and you would be amazed that I, I I just about can guarantee you God has moved on every person in this class to do something for Him in the Spirit, and I and if you're like me, sometimes I don't do it because I don't think it's God. I miss it. And when I do, I go back and I say, Lord, I repent, I apologize, I missed you. And you know what he does every time? He says, okay, here's what we're gonna do next. So there's no punishment if you miss it. 
there there's no degrading there's no stand in the corner and no there's no time out i mean god don't have that way well god has time but the people in this world don't and then in verse 8 for one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom we studied that to one the word of knowledge we studied that by it's all by the same spirit that's why we got to know the holy ghost to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit another working of miracles another prophecy another discerning of spirits to another many kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of those tongues but all these work of that one and self same spirit divide into every man his own as god wills so don't if somebody does boy i wish i could prophesy like like mike well God may not want you to prophesy like Mike. He might want you to prophesy like, like Linda. You know, or he might want to prophesy in your own unique way. So don't, don't try to fashion yourself after somebody else. You're God's man or woman, whatever, however you want to look at it. Now, notice here it says gifts of healing, but go to verse 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. And some can relate that to the evangelist. And then look at it says, gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. Then helps, which is vitally important. Governments and diversities of tongues. Now, notice here, it's gifts of healings. Through the years, there have been people that God, for some reason or whatever, his own reason, he tagged them. And, and give them a specific gift where they could heal certain diseases. Kenneth Hagin had great success praying for people who had cancer. But and other people, there was a man, I don't know his name, he read in the Bible where Jesus spit on a man and the man was healed. And so he started spitting on people and they come up to the prayer line. And the guy had fantastic miracles. And they, they said, you know, if you want to get healed, go up there, but you better be ready because he's going to spit on you. And that's one of the gifts of healings. And people were healed. You know, it was a spitting up ministry, but he got people healed. And that's, that's, that's where we want to go with it. Now, let's go to Mark 16. Once again, I'll probably use the scripture on Sunday, but we're going in a different vein on Sunday. I got a really good word cooking for Sunday. I really picked it up last night in intercessory prayer. Mark 6, you know it's amazing what God will speak to you when you pray. Don't shout me down when I'm teaching good. In Mark 16 and 17, Jesus said, These signs, supernatural miracles, signs and wonders, shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, and they drink any deadly thing, won't even hurt them, lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Now, if you, um, he says, these signs will believe. Well, what do, we, what do we have to believe? We have to believe that the Father has given us the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus is greater than any name in the whole world. Amen. And he says here that, that the believer, those who believe in that name, because Jesus says, in my name, so you have to have faith in that name, that whatever, that whatever Jesus did with his name, we can do with his name. Praise God. Remember Jesus said, the works I do, you'll do greater because I go to my Father. Well, it's his name and it's the Father in us that does the work. So, of course, we can do greater works because it's the Father in us. But he says, you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, that word recover there in the Greek means they will conceive. When you lay hands on people, they conceive the healing virtues of Jesus that word recover also means they will begin to mend. It also, and so not all healings are instantaneous, but God wants to heal everybody every time. We're going to be talking about healing tonight. I don't know how far we're going to get. And that has to be settled in your mind, that God wants to heal everybody every time. Amen. That's his will. And I, and you know, I've been around uh, good men, and you know, they pray this prayer: "Oh God, if it be Thy will, heal this person." Well, they don't know God's will; they don't know Jesus. And I can't. And when they pray that way, I just back off. And 
because I'm not going to get in agreement with it because nothing's going to get done. Praise God. Now, um, let's, let's, um, well, how do we, uh, we better read this. Go to, continue reading in verse 19. So then after Jesus had spoken on them, he was received up, received up in heaven, sat at the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with. Now remember the word them is italicized, so the translators put it in there. You can take it out or put it in, it's your option. I choose to take it out. Because then it reads this way. They went everywhere, preached everywhere, the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. That's a lot better. That's a better translation. God confirms the word. So now I, I read that scripture to you because here's why. If you go into a church and or into a group, and I've, been, I've done this with Joe McCroskey. I've seen Jerry Seville do it. I've been with him when he has done it. Uh, I've seen other people do it. But when you go into a group and you sense in your spirit that, let's say, for example, there's some healings need to take place in that group. You know, it, there's some physical healings. Well, to get the best results, you have to prepare the people to receive. And how do you do that? You preach the word. Because Jesus will confirm the word that you preach. And so Joel, Joel has told me many times, that Jerry, so I've gone into places, it's a three-day service, and the first day he said, there was nobody listening to me, the word wasn't going anywhere, and he says, I've learned, he says, those are my best meetings. And so I said, Joel, what do you do? He says, I go back the next day, and I, I, take, I take what the Lord gives me, and I keep pounding it, and I keep preaching it, until I break through that spirit. Now sometimes... And I've been in services that sometimes you can have a group of people and they won't receive. And you have to stop and take authority over the devil because he is a hindering spirit and he can stop people from hearing. But kick his butt out. I've, I've done that. You know, I've, I've had people come into the service and I, I don't know who these people are, but right in the middle, they'll raise their hand. And I know it's the devil trying to stop, distract. And, uh, and I'll, I ignore them, but that they keep their hand up and I says, I'll answer your question after the service. Now go right back and ignore them. Stay in the anointing at the end of it. At the end of the service, I says, sir, you had your hand up. What did you want? And he says, oh, I forgot. They, they didn't have a question. They want to distract. And so the word is the answer to people who can't receive. Remember when Jesus could do no mighty works there? What did he do? He went about teaching. Praise God. It's the same with people. If you go into a, a, a group of people and they're poor and hurting, the jobs market's bad, preach prosperity. Let God confirm the word with signs following. Praise God. Amen. I had to, I wasn't going to go there, but the Lord said to do that. All right, now let's go back to James, the, the epistle of James, chapter 5 and verse 13. Listen to what James, the instructions he gives to the church. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Don't whine or complain. Has anybody ever received a healing by whining or complaining? Oh God, why do I have this gut ache? <laughs> well, it could be you ate too many peppers. But if you're afflicted, pray. Really? It's come down to that, huh? I says, yeah, it's come down to that. Pray. <laughs> Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Okay, so now you're either going to ask for prayer or you're going to sing psalms. And then look at verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him, who's him? The sickle. Let the sickle call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, oil in the name of the Lord. Notice here, you know, I was listening to, I think it was Jerry Seville or Kenneth Copeland or Kenneth Hagan or one of those guys, but they said this, this man was home sick and his wife came to church and asked the elders if they would go pray for him and anoint him with oil. And the pastor, who was very wise, said, no, it won't do any good for us to go pray for him. 
because it says, let him who is sick call for the elders. Now, if he gets on the phone and calls us, we'll come. Praise God. I've had, I can't tell you how many times people have called me and they says, Brother Jerry, I have a, you know, they may, they may be from another town or something else. And they say, I have a man or I have a, a, a cousin, uncle, brother, grandfather in the hospital. Would you go pray for him? Well, you know, before I had any wisdom, I just go do it. And I'd go up there and says, hi, I'm Jerry Lampin and I'm from this church. And um, they asked me to come and pray for you. Who asked you to come and pray for me? I says, well, I, says, well, I, don't, I didn't ask for prayer. I don't need any prayer. What the hell are you doing in here? I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating very bad. They, and I thought, well, that's enough of that. So now, the, other, the last time I had a lady call me, she said, would you come and pray for my dad? And I says, will he receive me? Does he want this? And she says, yes. I says, okay, I will come. That's the one that I was going up there to pray. And the Lord says, put on, put on your Vietnam veteran hat. I, and I thought, Lord, I, all right, I'll put it on. So I, I put my hat on, went up there. And I walked through him. He had cancer of the throat and couldn't talk. And when he seen me, he, he got, and, and I says, what? Nina, what's he, he says, Jerry, he was a Vietnam veteran. And when he seen your hat, Amen. and then he, he said he got, he became, became peaceful. And I prayed for him. And he, she kept asking him, dad, are you saved? And she says, Jerry, just ask him if he's saved. And I can't remember the guy's name. And I said, brother, have you received Jesus? Are you saved? He says, she says, oh, thank you. That's all I needed. <laughs> so, praise God. So, um, let him who is sick call for the elders. Now, and then um, in verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. Because the power to heal and the power to forgive sin is the same. And so the prayer of faith not only will heal the body, but it will also forgive sins. Amen. Praise God. And then in verse 16, confess your faults one to another or your trespasses, your errors, and pray for one another that you may be healed. And so what he's saying here is if you have anything that could hinder the healing power of God to come into your body, get it out. Amen. If you have unforgiveness, if you've been gossiping, if you've been fooling around, and you know, you know, especially, you know, <clears throat> you want to hear from God? Just ask me if you've been naughty. <laughs> you say, yes, let's talk about this. Ooh, Lord, I didn't, I thought I was wonderful. <laughs> yes, I know you thought that. But let's, let's make sure you're wonderful. I've got a little list of things that we'd like to talk to you about. Praise God. Now, if the Lord ever came to me and said, Jerry, there's a few things you got wrong. I'm going to give him all my attention. Because I don't want to walk as a Christian and do things that don't please him. Amen. Okay, now, um, the last part there, he says, the, fervent, or the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I like the amplified. Listen to the amplified. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Amen. You know, if you have any doubt about your prayer life, you need to meditate that scripture in the Amplified. And it, see, it's not based on you, your attendance at church. It's not based on the good things you do. It's your righteousness that you got from Jesus. And it, so the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available, dynamic in this working. Every time I pray for people, I remember this scripture. These prayers are powerful. Why? Because it's the word of God and he confirms his word. Amen. Glory to God. You know, if you have that attitude, you're going to pass it on to the person you're praying for. You know, I've, I've prayed for hundreds of people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the last person in my office I prayed for, this kid, this kid had tried to get the Holy Spirit before his mom and dad prayed for him and he couldn't get it. And he was a little, he was a little apprehensive whether he'd get it or not. 
And I went through some scriptures. I says, now, are you ready to have the Holy Ghost? He says, well, do you think I'll... I says, yes, you're going to have it. I'm not in here to waste your time or my time. I lay my hands on you, pray in tongues. I ain't taking my hands off till you are. Now, are you ready? He says, yeah. See, if you, if you, that's dynamic and it's power. And if you're confident in God's word, I laid my hands on him. I brought Mandy in and we laid our hands on him. I, we just let him in the prayers. Now speak in tongues. Whoa. <laughs> Glory to God. And we need to instill that in people. We need to still, when we're praying for people, well, you know, if it's God's will, he'll heal you. And if it's not, you know, God heals sometimes and sometimes he don't. Well, then if, if you don't know what you're going to get, then why even call for the elders of the church? Would you come out and anoint me and see if God will heal me? That's not the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith, you know what you're going to get. Amen. Amen. I couldn't say it any better myself. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right, let's go back to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. 8 and 5, Matthew 8 and 5. You know the scripture. When Jesus went into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant, lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said to him, I'll come and heal him. See, that's our attitude. When you see here of somebody who's not doing well, your attitude is, well, let's, let's pray for the guy. Let's get him healed. But then the centurion answers, Lord, I'm not worthy. You should come under my roof, but speak the word only. My servant will be healed. Now, I think I've explained this enough times. You know what he's talking about. He was a Gentile. And, Jew, and uh, the, he, Gentiles are not worthy to have Jews come in their house. And Jesus was a Jew. So it's not, and, and we have to, I have to explain that and make sure everybody gets that. Because a lot of people misunderstand or misapply that scripture and they're thinking God won't do anything for them because they're unworthy because of some religious thing they've done or didn't do. And that's not that at all. He says, he says, I'm, I'm a dog. And that's what the, you know, if, if, if you, back in those days, you ladies, if you went to Israel and you weren't a Jew, they'd call you a dog. Now, the people who were dogs were not offended. Remember Jesus, that woman says, would you come and heal my daughter? He said, it's, I'm not able to give food to the dogs. Mm -hmm. And remember she says, true, Lord, I am a dog. Mm -hmm. Hear me? I, I'm a dog, Lord. But even the dogs get the crumbs. Mm -hmm. Boy, she touched him with that one. Boy, he says, that lady, that's good. Well, women, are, women can pretty, be pretty smart when they want something. <laughs> they can con you out of a lot of stuff. And God appreciated that. Appreciated that. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Shirley's not here. <laughs> All right. Praise God. So Jesus wanted to come and lay hands. Now here's what I, this is the reason why I'm getting to this. Jesus wanted to come lay hands on him because, you know, you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And then, and then the, in verse 9, the centurion said, Listen, I'm a man under authority having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. To my servant, do this, he do it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that follow, Truly I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Praise God. Now, um, come down to verse 13. And then Jesus said unto the man, to the satyrian, go your way as you have believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed the selfsame hour. Mm -hmm. So Jesus did not lay hands on this man. And what I'm just bringing to your attention, which I think you already know, there's more than one way to bring healing to people. You know, I've, I've known of people who got healed by watching an evangelist on TV and the evangelist put your hand on the screen. They did and they got healed. You know, Joe likes the prayer cloths. He's got Jerry Seville doing it now. You know, but but there's you can lay hands on him. Or, you know, and other other times. Oh, come on, I'll say, yeah, I'll say that. The Lord just brought something to my attention right quickly. There's been times when people have come up for prayer and we're going to lay hands on them. And there will become people up there who I don't know. And I don't know if they're saved or not. 
and they want to lay their hands, I ask them politely, sir, would you not lay your hands on this person? Well, they get kind of... But you don't want somebody who's full of unbelief and does not, not have the spirit of righteousness praying for people. And so you, you've got to be watchful who you, uh, who you lay hands on with. And I just ask them politely, sir, would you not lay hands? Now, some of them get offended and some understand. Praise God. And then sometimes the Lord says, I don't want them praying for them. I want you to. Now, notice here, Jesus said the man was healed in the selfsame hour. So I, I did a little study on that word hour, and it's optional. It could be within 60 minutes. It also could mean that he was healed the same day. It also means he was healed in a particular season or it could be instantaneous. And so not all healings are instantaneous. I wish they were. It is so, it is so good when a healing comes very quickly. But nevertheless, when hands are laid on you and you conceive the healing virtues of Jesus, that healing virtue begins to work in you. And so you have to be trained on how to protect that seed of healing that was put in you. Thank you, Lord. With Jesus stripes, I am healed. Amen. You can't, you can't speak against what God's trying to give you. Well, I didn't get anything. You're right. You didn't. Amen. Praise God. So I don't, you know, if I don't feel relief right away, it makes no difference. I know I've received the healing virtues of Jesus and I have a responsibility to protect it while it works out the sickness in my body. Praise God. Now, in, I, this is a little bonus here, here, a bonus for you. In 14, when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a, of a fever, touched her hand and the fever left her. She arose and ministered unto them. Now, I come from a Catholic background. And in, in Catholicism, priests can't get married because the Pope was never, the first Pope, Peter, was never married. Jesus prayed for Peter's wife. <laughs> Amen. So it, now this is my opinion, and I don't, uh, I don't think the Catholic Church can listen to me, but they should let the priests get married because they're they burn just like everybody else. They have, you know, why should they have to resist all those temptations? Amen. Let them get married. They can, you know, Peter was married. They, they don't believe he was, but there's several of the other couple of the, of the gospels that talk about his mother-in-law. He was married. All right. Praise God. So when, you know, if you have a, a woman in the house, wife, and she doesn't feel like cooking and do just pray for her and she'll get up and get to work. That's, that's, well, it works for Jesus. Brother Jerry, do you have that kind of faith? Let's move right along. <laughs> Look over to at Mark's gospel chapter 6 and verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in a synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath these man these things, and what wisdom has this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So evidently Jesus is testifying about what he's seen. And they said, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and of Simon, and are not his sisters here with us, that they were offended at him? You know, folks, sometimes, listen to me really close here, there's sometimes you're trying to get your family members saved and healed. You might not be the one who can do it. Because is not this my sister? The one that used to beat me up all the time <laughs> and lock herself in the bathroom or for hours and hours, you know, or isn't this my brother who kept tormenting me? But, but you can bring them to somebody else. Oh, thank you, Lord. An illustration just came up. Our son was born uh, with chronic asthma and uh, he got really sick. And this is when Shodare was over on Helena Avenue and they took care of just little kids. That's all they ever took care of. And we took him in there and they committed him to the hospital. He was, and the doctor told us, come out and told us, Jerry and Kathy, I, I want to be honest with you. This is, this can go either way. 
Your, your son is so congested, I don't know if we can help him. We're going to do everything we can. And, and, you know, Kathy and I are just born again. We are just filled with the Holy Spirit. And we were just gaining revelation on healing. And, and I, I just want to just pray and believe God. Well, we got into a disagreement. And I says, Kat, we're making a mistake here. We, we're too close to the situation. We're emotionally involved. We need to back out and bring somebody else in. Yeah. I, I'm so humble. <laughs> I love my son. I want, and I wanted the best for him. And if it, if it means disqualifying myself, yes. no yeah. problem. And so we called Aunt Fee, and we explained to her. She says, oh, okay, I'll pray for him. So she goes in and prays, and I says, Kat, we're just staying out and let her pray. So Aunt Fee says, okay, and she left, and she says, okay, he'll be fine, and she left. We get in there, we, nothing had changed. But, but Kathy had this impression. To, he, they, they were trying to put needles in his arms to feed him, and he's just a little kidding. No, 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 no. And they couldn't find the veins. And so they could not get fluids into him. They could not find a vein. And so they're trying to get fluids out because he was so dehydrated. And so Kathy had a little cup full of ice and water. He loved ice. And she gave it to him and he took a cup. And that was it. That broke through. He, he took the whole thing and except, kept giving him ice water. And the next day he was released. Praise God. God. And so, you know, we don't always have to be the one who prays. You know, sometimes in church, when somebody needs prayer, the Lord will tell me, he says, this, you pick out these people, this lady, call the women to pray for her or, or call certain couples. And the Lord knows, he knows what has to be done. We, he knows who's going to receive from who. Praise God. And then I, I've seen people too that got in this rut and I rebuked them. But they says, only Pastor Jerry can pray for me. And I said, listen, you, that's the wrong attitude. I'm not, I, don't, I don't always have the gifts of healings that you need. You may need other people to pray for you. Amen. So don't, don't get in this rut where I only Joe McCroskey prays for me and all this kind of, don't do that. Let, let God choose who he's going to flow through. Amen. Are you still here? You're getting awful quiet. I didn't see any screwed up faces. All right, so then in, um, and in verse 3, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and all that stuff? And, and they were offended at him. Why? Because they knew him in the natural, they knew him in the flesh, but he's talking at a spiritual level. And they says, how does a kid that we know who lived on the block, who drove nails into wood for a living and planed boards, how, how can we trust him to pray for us and bring all these wonderful things to us. And they got offended at him. All right, so let's see how, well, how Jesus reacted to this because we come up against this all the time. Then Jesus said unto them, and he quoted, um, quoted one of the prophets. He says, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. And he could there do no mighty works except that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. Now, one translation says he, few, he prayed for a few people, got very little results. See, so even though you're anointed, there's going to be times when you pray for people and God will give you the most anointed prayers. I mean, you'll feel the heat the, and, and everything and nothing will happen. When that happens, do not take it personal. They may have, they're in a place where they're not ready to receive from you or anybody else. So what should you do? Go home and mope. <laughs> well, what did Jesus do? Verse six, he marveled because of their unbelief and he went about the villages teaching. So if people are not receptive, what should we do? Teach. Keep preaching the word and let God confirm it. And that's what Joe was telling me. He's, Jerry, when you come up uh, against a bunch of people and, they're, and they're, there's a wall there, he says, you keep preaching till you break through it. He's, don't, don't you let the devil keep that wall up. And I, I totally understand what he's saying now. It's, it's really fun when everybody's receptive and everybody's, yeah, I want this. Those are the good times, but not everybody's like that, but they still need preaching. Praise God. 
So um, he, he had to give them something to believe because what they believe is what God can confirm. Glory to God. All right, now let's go back to the foundation of healing back in Isaiah 53. You, you all know the scripture. We, you know something? Every time I quote this scripture and take it off of the Bible, I go back and it's back there again. God keeps replenishing it. Now, Isaiah, approximately 740 years before the birth of Christ, was given a vision of a man going to the cross in the future. He was a prophet, and he could see prophetically into the future. And so he's seen this man. We'll pick it up in Isaiah 53 and 3. He said, this man that I've seen in a vision, this is 740 years before this happened, B.C., he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid it, we as, we hid it as in our faces from him. He was despised and esteemed, esteemed him not. Notice Isaiah says, we hid our face. Who's he talking about? The Jews. The Jews reject, rejected Jesus. Remember what Jesus says? I'm going to make Isaiah prophesied well over you people that he would provoke you to anger by a people who is not a people. When Jesus came to his own people and they wouldn't receive him, who did he go to? The dogs. We got him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and then, you know, he was rejected, a man of sorrows. And if you read the Gospels, and if you've been listening to me at a time at all, if you go back there, Thomas was not the only one that doubted. Every one of his disciples, remember Peter and John? They, would, they did not believe the women that came and says, we've seen Jesus. Yeah, right. You women, you guys are always got, it's an old wives' tale. You guys are just starting an old wives' tale. They didn't even, none of them believed. And that's why when he came and upbraided them with their unbelief, he got in their face. I told you I would raise, be raised up, and I sent the women to confirm it. You didn't listen to them. He got in their face. Praise God. I'd rather have God get in my face than ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then, and then he goes in verse 4, surely he, and we, you know he's talking about Jesus, he's born our griefs. Now, you know the word born means carried. So all that stuff the devil has carried, Jesus has carried it firsthand. So the devil's carrying sick disease, but the sick disease he has planned for us, Jesus carried on his body. If, if you continue to read, it will say that Jesus' visage was marred worse than any man in other words he was so beat up and so full of sin and sickness disease he was on the cross he was almost unrecognizable as a man and isaiah prophesied and he's you know they crucified a lot of people but this man his visage her appearance was so messed up you couldn't even recognize him as a man and so he carried what the devil's trying to get us to carry no devil don't bring that flu here you, you're a carrier of it, but Jesus carried my portion. You take it, you take it down, you take it out, and he ain't bringing it in here. And then, it, so that, and that word grief there, if you look it up in Hebrew, means sickness and disease. Jesus carried our sickness and our diseases. And he also carried our sorrows. Now, the word sorrows there is pain. Now, I'm going to tell you something here if you didn't know this. God will even carry self-inflicted pain. Mm, yeah. Even if you do it to yourself. God, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> it reminds me, my buddy was telling me when they were kids, they were little kids there out in this field, and they would shoot arrows in the air and then watch them come down and everybody would run. <laughs> well, this kid shot this arrow up and he's looking around. And he didn't, where'd that arrow go? Where'd that arrow? All of a sudden, he hit him right on top of the head. And I said, did it go through? He said, no, it bounced off. <laughs> he had a big bump on his head, but the arrow bounced off. These new bows, they'll go through your head and come out somewhere else. And you can just use your imagination. So he carried our sickness, these pains. You know, why should you carry pain if he's already, if he's already carried it? Yet we did a stream him smitten or stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. They thought that the, the scribes and Pharisees convinced the people 
that God wanted him crucified because he claimed to be a prophet and he claimed to be the son of God. You claim to be the son of God? Oh, this, this calls for a crucifixion. And then, and then in verse five, but he was wounded, and that word wounded is tormented. For our transgressions, he was bruised, and the word bruised means beat to pieces. For our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. Are healed. That's why, you know, people think you're weird I had worked with a guy and I would, I, I, the devil's trying to give me a cold virus and I, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus, with your stripes, I am healed. Now this guy is a spirit-filled Christian that goes to another church and he kept shaking his head. I said, what's your problem? He said, Jerry, he says, you keep saying you're healed, but I watch you sneeze and cough. I says, well, brother, I have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Am I going to accept what the devil's trying to give me or am I going to accept the word of God that says with Jesus stripes, I am healed. But he says, yeah, but you're not. <laughs> I says, then the word's wrong. The word, did God lie? He says, that's not what that means. I said, what's it mean? He says, I don't know. <laughs> but if it was true, you wouldn't be coughing and sneezing. About an hour or two later, I went over to him and I says, you notice anything? He says, no. So I'm not coughing and sneezing. By Jesus stripes, I am healed. You're weird, Lampy. You're just weird. <laughs> yeah, you're weird if you don't fit into the world's mold. Wow. Praise God. Right? If, if that's what takes, that's what a weirdo is, put me down. Put me down for a double portion. Praise God. So, um, now listen. I, I've, I've, you know, this is 740 years before Jesus was even born. And Isaiah says, with his stripes, we are healed. How can that be? Well, in Jesus' way of thinking, this was, this was, only, um, this was only a less, less than a day away. 740 years is less than one day to Jesus, because one day is a thousand years, and a and thousand years is one day. To him... It's, it's only at the end of the day. It's late in the afternoon. 740 years to Jesus is only three quarters of a day. Amen. But our time is 740 years. His time was then. So with Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Did you, is that, yes, yes. Is that too deep? No, well, you guys are smart. Okay. Man. I want to ask God to take you all to heaven. When it's time. Praise God. So now, um, on the cross, he died. When he died, it wasn't just for sins. It was for our healing, poverty, peace, lack, deliverance. All that, all that stuff was taken care of at one time. You know, I tell guys, you know, this guy say, well, God doesn't heal every time. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Does he save every time? Well, no, because some people won't ask him. Well, then he can't heal if you don't ask him, if you don't believe, can you? Lappy, why do you always bring this stuff up? <laughs> because it's so easy to help you to see how screwed up you are. <laughs> so Jesus has done everything he's ever going to do. So you can, can you see why it is an error to go, oh, God, please heal me, please. And God said, what? what are you, where, yeah. you couldn't be going to Lampin Church because he's taught you better than that. What do you mean? Well, I've already said with my stripes, you're healed. I've already took care of it. Why are you asking me to do something I already did? Amen? Praise God. Yeah. It's like Barbara Schmehel used to always tell me when I would be like this. And she has said, Jerry. Did you just buy them new shoes? And I said, yes. She says, take them back downtown and pay for them again. I says, that, Barbara, that doesn't make any sense. He said, well, either is what you're saying make any sense. It's already bought and paid for. And it took her a while to get through to me. You know, thick. <laughs> Leadhead. East Helena. Praise God. It's already done. So Jesus, with your stripes, I am healed. He says, yes. Now I've got something to work with. 
Now I can confirm what you say. Amen. You say, Lord, I, I, you know, I'm going to be healed. Lord says, okay, you, you pick the time or the date. We'll get her done. And every day, Lord, I'm going to be healed. <laughs> Praise God. I, I read the story of a, of a person who was born with no feet. They had no feet. And they started to hear the word of God where with Jesus stripes you're healed and he does miracles today. And so they says, Lord, I want to walk. And so they went downtown and bought a pair of shoes. And the guys, what size do you need? You know, I haven't thought about it. I think I would like to be a nine. Okay, you want to try him on? He says, no. He said, I'm just going to take him home. He says, well, okay, you can try him off if, on if you want. He says, no. He had stubs. So he takes them home, and every morning he'd get up and he'd, he'd put his stubs in those shoes. Thank you, Lord, with Jesus stripes, I am healed. You're my healer. Thank you, Lord. One day he put them on, and they fit perfect. He had feet, he had toes, everything. He just kept confessing the word. And he put, and that faith without works is dead, so he got shoes, and he was walking along. Yes. Glory to God. I love those kind of stories. All right. I, you ever heard the story of Rodney Coyne? I, I told you about that one. Anybody remember Rodney Coyne? Rodney Coyne only had one eye. And his, his eye was gone. He had no eye. And he had a glass eye they put in there. And uh, the Lord said, uh, Lord, I want you to heal my eye. And the Lord, and give me a new eye. And the Lord says, I command you to see. But he says, Lord, I, it's a glass eye. He says, if I command you to see out of that glass eye, you'll see out of it. And he could see out of the glass eye. <laughs> and he, and there was, it's supposed to be documented. I, I read books on it where they would tape his good eye closed and he could see through the glass eye and the doctors couldn't explain it. Nobody could explain it. And they says, why, how can you do this? Because the Lord commanded me to see through it. And then he took it out, and he could still see with the little with no eye, and it just it just messed him up. Wow. Praise God. Now, when I read these things, I believe it. I I say, Lord, I believe this. I am not a doubter. Amen. Praise God, because I'm I'm preparing my heart for a miracle I may need or that somebody else may need. Glory to God. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, and then we'll, we'll start winding down. In Philippians 2 and 9, I'm going to probably go to this scripture on Sunday as well. Therefore the God has highly exalted Jesus and give him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess or about to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. So the reason I brought the scripture up to you is God gave the name of Jesus to all of his people. So you can take the name and pray for your own healing. Amen. So now, now you remember back when we first started this, gifts of healings. There's more than one way to skin a devil. Praise God. You know, and sometimes God will tell you to do strange things. And, and you just do what he says to do. Praise God. It's, it's, not, it's not the thing he tells you to do to get your healing. It's your obedience. I'm trying to think of things that I've heard. But... So you don't ever ask the Lord to heal you because he already has. Oh, dear Lord. I hear, oh, dear Lord Jesus. Well, first of all, you're not supposed to pray to Jesus. What if we ask the Father in my name? Oh, dear Lord Jesus, would you please heal me? If you will, I'll, I'll stop drinking for a week. I'll stop cussing the best I can. You know, I don't know. I've talked to a lot of guys who were in the military and they were in battles and they call it a foxhole conversion. Mm -hmm. God, if you just get me out of this, I'll serve you. Yeah. And when they get back to safety, I, I, you know, Lord, I in the heat of battle, how you say things. <laughs> All right. Last scripture. Let's, let's, let's look at Mark gospel chapter 11. I'm listening to Kenneth Hagin's tapes and he's always on Mark 11, 20, 22 and 23. I love it. 
those tapes are so good. In Mark eleven twenty four, Therefore I say unto you, what things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. Now that's a whole lot different than what most people pray. Yeah. Well, let's just pray and see if God will do something. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe. Lord, this is what I want, this is what I'm believing. He'll say, okay, well, I got something to work with. And in verse 25, when you stand praying, now you remember, you can't stand all day. When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought. Now the word ought is unforgiveness, hatred, animosity, grudges, resentment, offenses against any, anybody, preachers, family, yourself, anybody, that your Father which is also in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Don't let the devil rob you of the promises. Amen. Keep that, keep that unforgiveness out. That will hinder a healing faster than anything. Mm -hmm. Don't wrestle with flesh and blood because we need his power. Amen. Now, in closing, and this will be the final closing. I'm going to probably read this in Sunday in church too. This is a lady, her name is Jennifer LeClaire, never heard of her before. Kathy got this out of Charisma Magazine. And I'm just going to read you a couple of paragraphs out of what she wrote. I went back and I got the highlights, and you'll see why I'm, re I'm going to read this to you. And what she's saying, I totally believe, because she's not the first person I heard say this. Here's what she says. I believe we're going to see a great move of God that's greater than the voice of healing movement, greater than the Jesus movement, the charismatic movement, and the prayer movement, all rolled into one. I believe a new healing movement is emerging even now. This movement won't be marked by a handful of evangelists and sparkling personalities and powerful gifts that fill stadiums and buy TV airtime. Rather, the movement will see the saints... Rise up and do the work of the healing evangelist with prophetic insight and pastoral care. See, this is perfectly in line with what I've been sharing with you. You and I can do this. The next great move of God will unleash believers who have faith to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, cast out devils, and even raise the dead. I believe it's part of the saints' movement that Bill... Hammond prophesied many years ago in his book, The Day of the Saints. He wrote, a day of the saints coming in which God is calling every believer to participate. Every believer. This will be the greatest time in history for those who hunger to fulfill God's will for their lives, especially those who are 100% committed to glorify Christ. Overcome all things, reap the great harvest, and see God's kingdom come, and his will be done in the earth as in heaven. In 2014, Dutch Sheets said this, power is about to be multiplied and the dead are going to be raised. Limbs are going to grow and cancers are going to disappear. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Every kind of disease is going to go and bow before Jesus. Signs, wonders, and miracles are about to multiply. Families are going to be healed and come to the cross. I totally believe that. Because she's not the first person I've heard say it. Kenneth Copeland has been saying it. Jerry Seville has been saying it. Kenneth Hagen said it. Oh, man. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth had said it. I've been saying it. Dr. Miller. Uh, Aquila Nash has been saying it. She says, she said, you know, everybody thinks I'm a crazy old woman. But I'm telling you, by the Spirit of God, there's more, much more coming. And we're, we're stepped into it, folks. We're stepping into it. But when, when it, you know, we may be knee deep, but we got to get out. We got to get out over our heads where the deep part is, where there's no snags, where we, the only thing that's going to hold you up is the power of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The healing powers of Jesus. Let's, let's pray and then we'll, we're going to have a, a group discussion if you'd like. Father, I presented the Word tonight. I love the Word of God, and my brothers and sisters love the Word as much as I do. And we believe it. And because we believe it, you can confirm it with signs following. Lord, we want to be a part of the end times church. The great move of the Holy Ghost, the great move of the Spirit. We want in. There are people that we yearn to see healed. 
diabetes and cancer and limbs grown out and, and disabilities. We want them totally healed, Lord. And we know that we're in the right place. We're, and, and as we, we wait for the timing, we know that's already been taken care of. We're just looking for our instructions, our commandments to fulfill your will. And we thank you for it. We declare that we will see these miracles in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, is there anything you want to do tonight in a gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, anything you want to do, we're here to receive from you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if this is somebody in this room, but and maybe it's somebody next door or on the internet, but somebody keeps passing out. They keep blacking out. They're having seizures, and they, they just black out. They just faint. I rebuke that demon out of your life. Yes. That, that deaf and dumb spirit must come out of your body right now in Jesus' name. I declare you sound, whole, and healed. There'll be no more seizures, no more fainting, no more blacking out. I declare with the stripes of Jesus, you're now healed and redeemed. In Jesus' name, praise God. Somebody in there, it's some place in your body. It's in the joints. It's in the region of the legs. It could be hips, knees, ankles. But it's bone to bone. There's no cushion in there. There's no fluid to, to uh, dampen that. In the name of Jesus, I minister a creative miracle and, re and replace those pads that need to be in those bones and the, the fluid that lubricates those bones to be there right now in Jesus' name. You be healed right now in Jesus' name. No hesitation. Be healed the safe self, same hour in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you think that I have jested with you, saith the Lord, when I have told you that I have called all of you and I have equipped you and that I'm prepared to send you into the places where other people will not go? I will not send you comfortless. I will not send you unprepared. But I will fill you with the power of my Holy Spirit before I send you to do an assignment. And you will do great exploits because you do believe. The hour of the time of your appearing, the hour of your power is at hand. Do not say it will come one day because that one day is here now. So you gird up the loins of your heart and of your mind and you be prepared to do what I tell you to do. And when, I, when you hear my voice and you step out and do what I say, we will rejoice together because you will see things you have not seen before. And you will know that it was your God who did those exploits. Because you were willing to obey and do what I ask, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. 